Let's go to Megan calling in from Vermont. Megan, what's your question for Adriel? Hi, Pastor Adriel. Um, I was I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who's a non-believer, and they were trying to discredit the Bible by saying the Bible is okay with slavery. And I'd never really heard of that before, and I didn't really know what to say. And I'm wondering how would I respond to someone who, who says that? Hmm. It's an excellent question, and one that, that comes up pretty often. We got actually a very similar question not too long ago, and it was toward the end of the broadcast. This is like, oh, man, I need way more time <laughs> to answer this question. Um, but but there are a couple of things I think that we can say. There were prohibitions and there were permissions in the Old Testament um, given laws relating to to slavery. Um, I mean, you, you think about in Israel, if if someone had fallen upon hard times and they wanted to to become essentially an indentured servant, um, you know, a slave, they they could do that. And that was in one in one sense a way of providing for themselves. And there were opportunities for freedom. Um, given in the law, you know, after after a period of time, you know, your slave was just supposed to go go free, um, or they might choose to stay and to become a part of the household. Uh, and a lot of times, when we think about slavery, or we hear about slavery, we're we're seeing it through the lens of the the horrific history that that we have here in the United States with with slavery and the slave trade. Um, so, a, a couple of things. I think one, it's it's anachronistic to read that experience back into the biblical times. Two. The Bible gives us a, a whole theology of mankind made in the image of God, um, and so it gives us the, the the foundation for treating all people with dignity and respect, not objectifying others. And it's this theology that was at the heart of the abolition of slavery at, at various points in history. It was it was that reality? Is, is no, we're not talking about beasts here. Less than humans, we're talking about human beings made in the image of God who should be treated with love and dignity and respect. And so even though there were allowances made in the Old Testament, that, that was never supposed to be um, – that was never supposed to be the case, the, the thing. I think of it sort of like divorce, Megan. You know, when Jesus is talking to the religious leaders in Matthew chapter 19 and, and they said, well, you know, Moses gave you know, permission for, for doing a certificate of divorce. And he says, look, from the very beginning, that's not how it's supposed to be. In God's world – in the perfect world, that's not how it's supposed to be. It's because of our own sinfulness, our hardness of heart, that these things happen in the world. Um, and, and that's certainly the case with something like this, you know, with the objectification of another person, treating them like a thing for my own advancement. Um, that's, that's wrong. And why is that wrong, you can say to your friend? Well, it's wrong because that person is made in the image of God. That's why it's wrong, because we're not just you know, the product of blind chance and evolution. Um, well, if that's the case, then then how do you have a, a real basis for anything that's objectively good or moral? You don't. I mean, you, you couldn't, I mean, you might say, well, I don't think that that's right. That's how I feel. But some, some periods in history said it was totally fine. And you wouldn't have a real basis for arguing against that. We're saying, no, we have something foundational as Christians. Um, as theists who believe in in a good God who made us in his image for saying that should be rejected. And in the new creation, there's going to be none of that. And so um, I think there are a lot of places you can go with this. But but those are some of the things that I would I would say in, in having that conversation and hopefully steering it back to the fact that, look, we're made in the image of God. This is why we ought to we ought to uh, give each other that love and dignity and respect and care for one another as God calls us to. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things we've often talked about here at Core Christianity is just because something is mentioned in the Bible, it doesn't mean it's prescribed by God. Polygamy is another example of that. Just because we see that happening, sure. the king's taking multiple wives, it's not like God said, hey, I want you to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. If you're reading the Bible and you're thinking, oh, look at King David did this, so it must be okay for me. Um, Bad news. That's not the way. I mean, and the amazing thing is you read about so many of these patriarchs and heroes and people that, you know, we often look at and say, oh, well, they're such a godly person. I remember when I was reading through First and Second Samuel with our kids and we get to the, the, the scene with David and Bathsheba. Uh oh. <laughs> My kids were shocked. My kids were shocked because up until that point, you know, you're sort of you, – David is this great hero, this great king. He's obedient to the Lord, not like King Saul. And yet here he is acting in such terrible ways. And it's sort of like all my kids, their, their jaws drop and they think, he's, he's a bad guy. <laughs> he's, he's, and, uh, and he's a sinner. And we're sinners. We're desperately in need of the grace of God. Um, and we long for a world where people aren't treated like things. 
we see this a lot. I mean, so you know, we see this a lot. Also, you know, I'm I'm just bring it up. We see it a lot in, um, in the the lust of our society. Lust is a problem because it's treating another person as an object for your own gratification, your own sexual gratification. That's wrong. That's the objectification of another person. Um, and yet, so many are blind to that today. 